What's going on, church fam? It's Church Life bringing y'all another video. I pray y'all are having a blessed day. So, the other day, a thought came to mind. The bigger the risk, the greater the reward. Because it's something about taking that leap of faith and pursuing something that you know you will enjoy. Because a lot of times our unhappiness is tied to doing a bunch of things that we just don't enjoy, you know? And what's usually in between us and our happiness is work. Some sort of job that we just don't love. And it's all about perspective, of course, because some people love the jobs they have and they get to do stuff that brings them more joy or more happiness in their lives. But there's other people that the only reason they're doing this career is because someone told them to. Like their parents worked in this profession so it's just a family tradition. So they're just doing that to make someone else happy, to bring joy to them, instead of, you know, living in their dreams or something they want to do. And what I came to realize is this. When you are doing something you just don't want to do, right? The only way you can succeed in doing something that you want to do is remove the cushion. Remove the cushion. There is no backup plan, just faith. See, I learned that most people that become happy in life in succeeding in something that they want to pursue, right? They remove what we call the backup plan. Because a lot of times what happens, right? If you know you got a backup plan, if this fails, right? Then you won't give it all you have. You will only give what you're comfortable with instead of giving everything because you know you have something to fall back on. But if you remove the cushion and you take that leap of faith, then you're going to give every single thing you have. And that's when doors will start, start opening up for you. See, I learned this over the years, y'all. A lot of times, right, <clears throat> when we start pursuing something that we know going to bring us happiness, right, and we just take that leap of faith and not really waver in what we're pursuing, we get to the very end. We might be closing in on that target and we get to the very end when it becomes the most difficult. And that's when we typically throw in the towel. When all we had to do Let's take one more step. But here's another reason why sometimes people feel stuck in certain stuff that they typically didn't want for themselves. They doing it to make somebody else happy. Here's another reason why we may feel stuck. Because if we quit this job, we might feel like, dad, but who are we letting down? Because since I'm pursuing this, it's making my parents happy. And then once you get into that profession, right, you realize if I leave this, what about all the time they put in to me? Everything that they invested in, the knowledge, the experience, Will I be letting them down? How would they view me? 
So that's why sometimes people remain stuck in stuff they don't want to do. Because they start looking at their lives in that form of fashion of who will I be letting down. But at the end of the day, you still want to be happy. See, go somewhere alone for a second, right? Sit down and write down five things that you feel like will make you happy. Once you got it down on a piece of paper, think about ways to get closer to that. Because the thing I'm realizing is this. In order to get to a place of doing something that makes you happy, you got to do something that you don't want to do. And you got to remove the cushion. You got to remove what you feel like will be a backup plan. You got to go all the way in. That's the only thing that's standing between you and your happiness. See, I remember living in Greenville, North Carolina. That's where I'm originally from. I started working at this place called Sam's Club. And I started off as a cart attendant. Bills was due and my car payment was due and I wasn't really making enough money to cover all my expenses that I needed to cover. So a job opportunity came up and I said, well, you know what? I gotta make a decision. Now here's the thing. I love working at this job at Sounds Club. And when that job opportunity came up, I said, am I gonna take this job? Or am I just gonna continue to be a card attendant? So the position that became available was a butcher position in the meat department. So I said, you know what? The only thing that's in between me and this promotion is fear at this moment. Because I knew if I accepted this position, I would have to undergo new training. So to make a long story short, I accepted the position and I started making more money to cover my day-to-day -day expenses. But there was a learning curve. See, I don't really got a good memory sometimes. And I had to learn a whole bunch of new stuff. There was codes that you gotta put on the product so, you know, when you go to the cash register, you can scan it. You know, the barcodes and all that kind of stuff. There was the codes that I had to learn. And if you've been at Sam's Club, then you will know all that stuff in there is labeled. That's with any store for real though. But I had to learn all this stuff because I had to package the product. The only thing that would have stopped me is if I didn't try. I could have gave up, but here's the thing. I didn't have no cushion to go back on. See, I couldn't just go back to the carts because as soon as I got out of that position, they filled that spot. So I continued to move forward and then eventually what was once hard became easier. I realized this, when you accomplish a hard task, that's what brings forth happiness. When you have to make hard decisions because there's something that you want to pursue and you do it and you achieve that goal, that's what brings forth happiness. 
See, when you don't take leaps of faith, you regret it later on. When you don't try, when you don't stick to something, even when it's getting hard, because remember what I said, when you get to a certain place in life, depending on how hard it is, usually that's when that turnaround season happened, but some people throw in the towel. But when you don't give up and you accomplish that goal, once you get past that learning curve, once you get past that hump, that's what brings forth happiness because you stuck to something. See, sometimes we got to do stuff that's going to make us feel better as a person instead of doing stuff that's going to make others feel better. And that's not necessarily you saying you don't care about their feelings. But it's just most people don't take leaps of faith because they fear the thought of failure. So they just telling you what to do based upon what worked for them. Sometimes you got to find out for yourself because at the end of the day, you got to believe that God is going to help you through these uncharted territories. See, when I started working in the meat department of Sounds Club, I wanted to become a butcher by trade. That's something that I wanted to do. That's something that I enjoyed at the time. The only thing I couldn't really get used to was how cold it was back there. My hands used to be freezing. And the main reason why I decided to work at Sam's Club in the first place, though, was because I seen my mom accomplish a lot of stuff just working at Sam's Club. She got a house built from the ground up and everything. Was even about to start a, a business. But she ended up getting sick. And I, and I, I think... Well, for those that don't know, my mom, she built a house from the ground up before she got sick while she was working at Sounds Club. We ended up losing the house for the new listeners that's tuning in. Because I have talked about this a few times, but that's what happened. And so that's why I wanted to dedicate my life to Sounds Club because I saw what my mom achieved. But then all that started crashing down and I lost my job. I got fired based upon something that happened outside of work that wasn't even my fault too. So I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life because I invested so much time in Sounds Club, four years of my life. Four years of my life, I started working there when I was 18, and I invested four years of my life and got fired. And it was in the most critical time of my life. I didn't know how things was going to turn around. But one day, the Heavenly Father said, take what little bit of money you have and moved to Columbia, South Carolina. So once again, I had to make a hard decision. Do I be obedient to the voice of God or do I continue to make it work in Greenville, North Carolina? You get what I'm saying? It was a risk. I had to take a major risk and by me taking what little bit of money I had at the time to make this move, God removed the cushion. Once again, there was no plan B. We didn't have a backup plan. It was either we walk by faith, not by sight, believe that God was going to help us through uncharted territory, or we remain in the land of familiar. Now, mind you, I was already miserable. I was already unhappy. 
I was already disappointed with my life on how things was turning out. So it was like, at that moment, I said, what do I have to lose? <laughs> Boy, was that crazy. So we end up taking that trip to Columbia, South Carolina. And when I said, what do I have to lose? I realized everything. My mom lost the storage that she had in Greenville. And then the stuff that we did have, we ended up losing that too. So we barely even got pictures from our childhood. Other than the few pictures we probably got on social media and the few pictures that maybe a few, just a few family members that had of us. But we don't even got no traces of our childhood, for real. That's how much we lost, y'all. It was a risky move. We didn't understand it at the time. We didn't know what God was doing at the time. But we ended up getting jobs in South Carolina. We started off at this place called Bilo. It's a supermarket. We worked there for a while. Me and my mom, we both got hired on. And once again, I was working in the meat department, but I didn't like the environment. I didn't like this job. So I found me another job and I started working at this place called the Fresh Market. And I was working in the bakery. And th this is kind of wild when I think about it. So once I started working there, a job promotion was offered to me. And I had two options. I could either become one of the head people that worked in the bakery or I can work in the meat department again. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. I, like now that I'm reminiscing and thinking about this, it's kind of wild. But I felt in my spirit that's what, that wasn't what the Heavenly Father wanted for me. You get what I'm saying? I just felt that the Heavenly Father was calling me to do something greater than what I was about to settle for. So I decided to decline both of the, the job promotions. And what's crazy about it, there was people that was trying to get that position in the bakery before I was. And they've been there longer than I have. But, you know, you know how the favor of God works. Sometimes it feels like it ain't fair, but that's how it goes sometimes. So I end up letting her get that position. And one day, the Heavenly Father spoke to me and he told us to forsake all, to follow him. Now, around this time, my grandma had passed away. My mom, she called me while I was at work and she said, mama passed away. I called my sister. I told her what my mom told me. And it was a dark time, a very dark time. But I put in my two weeks notice. Once again, we became obedient to the words of God. And we followed Lord Jesus. And it took and it took about 12 years, 13 years following Lord Jesus before our lives would turn around for the better. We went through everything, y'all. We got robbed on the journey like a few times. The worst time, though, we were sitting at a library. You know, that was our daily routine. And we will just go in there to cool off, 
use their Wi-Fi, maybe read a little bit, watch movies, and stuff like that. So when the library was closing, we was leaving, we was walking out to the truck because we, we started off in, like I always say, the famous truck. And the truck was a trailblazer, a Chevy trailblazer. But we were sitting in, we, we, we started off living in that. And so when we were leaving the library, we came out. We saw something sparkling. Because there was a street light that was over our truck and we saw like shards of glass sparkling on the ground. So we looked up. As we got closer, we, we realized somebody bust the window and stole my mom's purse. Now we only had a couple of dollars on my mom's card that she had at the time. We went online and we realized they was able to steal every single thing that was on my mom's card. And not only that, but they also was able to overdraft the card. Now that's something that they didn't even let us do. So whatever store they went to, they must got a system, I don't know. And they was able to overdrive the card. Took every single thing we had. That was the last thing we had, y'all. But my mom was able to call a friend and she helped us. And that's how we was able to get food that, that day. Because we already had a whole plan we was gonna leave the library. We was gonna go to McDonald's because that's really all we can afford around that time, y'all. Whenever we had a, a little bit of extra money. But that plan fell through. But God used that situation to help us through another way. We had a ram in the bush. My mom called a friend, she helped us. And we got better food that day. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's amazing how certain stuff work. So to fast forward, because I'm going to get into the details of all of this one day. But the Heavenly Father's still working on my testimony. But to fast forward, right? The pandemic happened. Now, this is years later. And I got laid off from my job. So I'm walking and I'm asking the father, what do you want me to do? What, what, what is my purpose? What, what? Every single time I think I got a good job or this, that, and the third, I end up losing it or something happened. Because backtrack a little bit, right? I even... Ended up getting a job at Amazon one time. But my my the truck that I was in, that we started the journey in, the transmission started messing up. Now, here's what's crazy about this, y'all. This is the strangest part about it. When I used to drive to work every day, right, it was all the way kind of like in a country, kind of. You know what I'm saying? In Columbia, South Carolina. And I got on, but my car, it was just messing up. So we was too far for the truck to break down out there. So I ended up having to leave that job. And I was getting paid pretty good. I was going to keep that job. So after I quit the job, guess what? The truck started working better. The truck started working better. So I was like, Dad, what, so what do the father want me to do? And mind you, I was I was still homeless around that time. So to go back when the pandemic happened, right, I got laid off from my job. I was never able to really keep a job because that wasn't what the Heavenly Father was calling me to do. So i never forget, I was walking through a parking lot and I asked the father, what is it you want me to do? And he said, it's time for you to start spreading his word. 
preaching the gospel. I want you to do this full time. Y'all, it took everything in my power to not look for a job and be faithful and obedient to the words of God. It took everything in my power, y'all. And God removed the cushion. He removed the cushion. It was very risky. I had to take a monumental leap of faith. But I stuck to it. I went through some ups and I went through some downs. But I stuck to it. I lost friends. I lost family. But I stuck to it. I lost jobs and I became homeless. But I stuck to it. The only thing that was in between me and true happiness was fear, rejection, disappointing people, letting people down, making others happy instead of becoming happy myself with finding something to do that brings joy to my soul. That was the only thing that was standing in between me and my new life. When I decided to do the will of God full time, that's when I started experiencing a joy that can't be compared to the stuff I had to go through. See, the pain that I experienced back then can't be compared to the joy that I have obtained once I started doing the will of God. And it has grown to, to something that I thought used to be impossible. But what I've learned through my experiences is that sometimes you gotta be reduced to nothing. You gotta lose it all in order to find some sort of purpose. Because sometimes it's hard to find purpose because we look at everything that already is still in our joy, still in our happiness. We're working jobs that really don't bring complete joy to us. But it's hard to find purpose because that's a backup plan. That's cushion that we could fall back on if this don't work. You get what I'm saying? So when the Heavenly Father said, spread the gospel, and he wanted me to do it full time. He wanted me to do his will full time. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I thought it wouldn't work. I thought the Heavenly Father had the wrong person for the job. But what's crazy about it, when the Father gave my life purpose, when I didn't have nothing else to fall back on, I had to lean toward the Heavenly Father, not my own understanding. And you know, it's funny because the father spoke to me that day and the words say in Romans 10 verse 17. So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I promise you. That verse spoke volumes in my life that day. I didn't know the heavenly father was going to turn all this stuff into what it is today. You know, I had to go through some stuff. And that's the stuff that was in between me and my happiness. See, I found joy in God once he removed the cushion. And I didn't think it was going to work. But the father, he told me what to speak on. I've had dreams that was pertaining to the end time. And the father told me to speak on that. And, you know, I just kept going, even when it looked like it wasn't working. See, I could have gave up, especially when the father told me to do it full time. So 
the moral of the story is if you really want to be happy in life, you got to take big risk. Because the greater the risk, the greater the reward. And there's some people that's not going to be happy with your decision to leave something that is sustaining you right now. But later on, it's going to bring you joy. The initial decision sometimes brings forth frustration. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be times when you feel like you made the wrong decision or you heading down the wrong path. Sometimes it's going to look like that. And then dealing with people that's talking against what you're trying to do is going to make you feel even worse because they've never seen it done before. They never heard no one let go of everything to do the will of the Heavenly Father. I'm talking about literally when we did that, we became homeless completely. They never seen that be done before. So it's natural for them to talk against it. Anything that you do when it's attached to taking a monumental, a monumental leap of faith, it's natural for people to talk against it because they never seen it be done before. So that's why I say you're going to be happy that you did it at the end. See, here's the thing, y'all. People don't care about how much you lose. They don't care about that. People really don't care about the stuff you went through. They care about when it works. See, I started doing this full time, making videos and spreading the gospel in any form of fashion the Heavenly Father tell me to, to do so. And I only had 25 subscribers. But now it has grown tremendously because I started living in the will of God. Now, the Father might be calling you to do something else. I don't know. But if it's something that you have in your spirit to do, I suggest you pray to the Heavenly Father about it and then take that leap of faith and remove the backup plan. Because if you don't remove that backup plan, you won't give it your all. So basically what I'm letting you know, you got to step out of that comfort zone. But to bring this to a close, once I started doing the will of God, he started blessing me with my heart desires as well. I always wanted to do something with music. God blessed me to be able to do that. And I always wanted to do something on YouTube. God blessed me to be able to do that. You know, I just, I like encouraging people to step out of their comfort zone. Trust God. Remove the cushion. Don't have nothing to fall back on because God wants you to fall upon him because he's going to help you stand. He's going to stabilize your footsteps and he's going to orchestrate your footsteps. He's going to lead you in the direction you should go when you acknowledge him in all your ways. I found that to be true. And so here I am today spreading the gospel. And I started off with 25 subscribers. I went through a tremendous amount of failures before I got to where I'm at today. Even till this day, I still got videos that don't do as well. But will I turn away from the will of God just because it's not working out as, as well as it once did? Or do I continue to do what the Heavenly Father showed me how to do at the beginning? And that's take that leap of faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. Faith come by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Do I continue to believe that God will get me through uncharted territory? Because the bigger the risk, the greater the reward. 
it's up to you. And sometimes when you take that leap of faith, it'll reduce you down to nothing. Because sometimes we got too many distractions and that's why we can't find purpose. But when God bring you to the wilderness, that's when he show you who you are. Keep believing and have faith in Lord Jesus. I pray this video bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all.